what are we doing today? Well, welcome to the podcast. Uh, I think introductions are kind of in order here. So um, I'll go first and say, uh, my name is Reese Lovell and I work for Eagle Land Brokerage and I'm a broker within the company. And uh, this is our startup first podcast. And so excited to have you join us. And to my right over here is Joseph Burns, owner of the company. And I'll let him introduce himself and tell me a little bit about how long you've been in the business and what what do you do? Well, um, you just introduced me, so thank you. <laughs> so I, I am Joey Burns. Um, I've been involved in the real estate business since 2000 and, oh gosh darn, no, that's terrible. 1994, um, got in the business. I own the company since 2011 and uh, we sell ranches. That's um, our, our focus, that's our business and Colorado is our territory. So um, we just um, love the business. We've watched it evolve from um, kind of a, uh, you know, who you knew and what you knew. And and uh, you, if you were a friend of a friend, you could sell a ranch. And uh, we've had to come a long ways to uh, put together a lot of systems and um, devices to kind of make sure that we take care of our customers and really try to focus our business and our marketing and just everything that we do when we really think about um, an owner's perspective. That's what we do. So let's talk about a ranch today. Um, we have a place in Garfield County called the Porter Ranch. And uh, so why don't you tell us where in the world this property is at and some of the high points of the ranch. Well, you know, um, Porter's a really unique ranch. It's a five, it's a fifth generation ranch. It's located between um, really Grand Junction, Colorado and Denver, uh, kind of halfway in between is Glenwood Springs. And this is right on Highway 70. And if you just go about, oh, 15 miles uh, to the west of Glenwood Springs, you get to the little town of Newcastle. And so this ranch would sit, um, as I'm getting my directions right, south of the highway there. Um, and once you go back down the highway, we have a lot of ranches that um, as you um, try to find just the highlights of them, access to a good town, access to an airport, really important. Um, many times having year-round access is, is, is really important. And then you kind of get into paved road access and it's kind of gets to be unheard of. So this is a ranch that's 16 miles to Glenwood Springs. It's 12 miles to the Rifle Airport. It has paved road access to the ranch. It's open year round. Mm. And once you get back to it, you're tucked into this little valley. It's incredibly private. Um, very beautiful, beautiful cattle ranch um, that's incredibly well located. And, you know, the town of Glenwood Springs, we say we sell ranches a lot of times to guys that come out with their buddies and they're looking for a, this cowboy dream. But, you know, the wives and the kids come and, and you really have to have a place that everybody can enjoy. And so you buy a ranch that's way out in the sticks and, and pretty soon it's just not as much fun for everybody. But this is a ranch that's just above, I mean, you're four miles to the Colorado River, which has rafting on it. Um, you go into Glenwood Springs and there's actually an amusement park for the kids. Um, there's multiple hot springs. Um, you know, you're in Aspen in an hour and 15 minutes. So, I mean, the ranch is incredibly well located, just great restaurants. It's one of those places you can... You can be on really quick, and you feel like there's nobody on earth but you. But if you want to go get a biscuit, um, you just go to town. So that's it's pretty awesome. nice. Yeah. So when you're you're talking about that, you you can see that this can be a family, and the fa whole entire family can enjoy it. Oh yeah, yeah. And interestingly, a lot of times when we're selling mountain ranches, elevation is really a key. I mean, we get to tell you ride, and I love tell you ride, love Western Colorado. But you get up in the high timber, and you've got to be 8,000, 8,500 feet to be up in the trees, you mm -hmm. know. And so people want to go elk hunting or have some wildlife experience. And the bottom line is it's really challenging um, to do that for some of them that are coming in from el low elevations, get up to the high mountains, and they just can't hardly breathe. And that's mm -hmm. the, one of the biggest issues we have as people come to the high country is, is, um, is just altitude sickness. Well, this ranch is at an elevation of 6,200 feet. But it has world class elk hunting, mm -hmm. and so I mean, it's a lower elevation ranch with um, um, just a tremendous amount of wildlife, tremendous amount, great bulls, um, really good deer hunting. I saw a bear bigger than a house up there a couple years ago. I mean, this year, and 
It's great. So, I mean, it's just been a, it's been a really a neat, um, wildlife ranch, but at a low elevation is something just really unique. So from an owner's perspective, when you're, when you're going through these ranches and you've been on a lot of ranches, um, what are some things about this property that you feel like they're to create the, the separate this one out from the pack? Well, I mean, that's really easy. Um, this ranch is very unique in the fact that it has 885 acres of irrigated ground. Hmm. And that irrigated ground in our country, you have to you have to know that as the as the water melts off the mountains, that that a lot of times um, as the water comes down, that water then runs out. So a lot of times, mid June, um, late June, you're out of water for your irrigation. So the only way to have water that's going to allow you to irrigate for an entire season is to have some type of reservoir, some type of resource. So years ago, there were a number of of, of um, water districts that were formed and they were formed so they could get government funding to allow them to build reservoirs that would then service a um, an entire season of water it allowed us to catch the water early and then as it ran out you then had late water that you could irrigate a ranch with so i've never seen a ranch like this that has early water and late water and it's exclusive to this ranch mm. so the ranch has a ditch that brings water for 13 miles it's called the Three Mile Ditch, um, and it fills a reservoir that's 1,200 acre feet. So to put that into perspective, this thing is 67 feet deep, 20 surface acres, and it fills each year and allows the water then to go from a high elevation into an underground system so the entire ranch irrigates off of gravity. Hmm. So, I mean, from an economic standpoint, I know of a local ranch here in Montrose, that um they have a similar system but they have to pump that water and i mean their water bill is sixty seventy thousand dollars a year just in electricity this ranch irrigates without pumps all with gravity and it's an amazing amazing system you know wow so i mean it sounds like it it's all underground yes sir wow yes sir so it comes in once you get to the top reservoir there's actually two dams okay. and these dams are what are called jurisdictional dams in the, in the state of colorado if a dam is over 10 feet in height it has to be engineered and so this on each side of the of this reservoir these dams are massive 80 feet tall and um this is what holds the water and um as that water goes into the system at the bottom of one of the reservoirs or dams, excuse me, there's a valve. You open that valve, it charges the system, and um, you then regulate your water by the sprinklers that you turn on. So it has not only big gun sprinklers that work that are basically um, Nielsen sprinklers, and you can move those around, mm. um, but it also has four pivots. And each of the pivots will, will the water supply will come from the gravity, but then... Um, the pivots each have power that allow the power to work like a, that, that to rotate. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So have you, have you considered today if, if you had the same property and you had to go implement that, you had to build the reservoir, build the underground irrigation system, yeah. what that would even look like in cost to try to attempt that today on another property? Well, yeah. I mean, I can speak to the irrigation. I mean, I use round numbers cause it's easy cause I'm a, I went to the second grade twice, but um, when it, when it comes to the uh, the underground system, usually you're looking somewhere between three and five thousand dollars an acre. It depends on on the amount of quick sets that you might have. Meaning that if those guns are automatic, they you know type of engineering you put in. So you know, to me, I use a low number of of uh, three thousand dollars an acre just for the underground system. Yeah. Um, so you know, you're at two and a half million dollars. $2.8 million, pretty easy with that. And the reservoir at the top of the hill, um, those are, the reservoirs were built in the 80s okay. and they were inspected by the dam inspector. But um, I talked to a, a, a buddy of mine who owns the biggest gravel company in our local region, asked him what it would cost to just build these things. Um, he did the calculations, the width, size, what you need for each of those dams. And just to move the dirt would cost $6 million. So before you get into the cost of the property, mm -hmm. you've got nine, ten million dollars in just infrastructure on this ranch for the dams, the reservoir, and the underground system. And and honestly, when you're trying to do comparable sales and you're looking at things like this, I can't point you to another place that has this kind of infrastructure on this kind of system. Um, it's it's just incredibly unique. 
incredibly right. unique. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, at your 15.9 for 3,500 3, plus acres, you're $10 million, well over 50%. And just replacement value on infrastructure alone, oh, yeah. the irrigation system. Oh yeah. So in order to to, I mean to be able to calculate that accurately, how are you able to even get the information to know on how much pipe there is underground to, to be able to get that estimate? Well, you know, it's kind of funny when we took this ranch on. This is a fifth generation ranch. Lots of family. Lots of of just time. People die. Um, people get married into families and pretty soon, um, unless they're really, really cared for, they get disjointed. So when we got the project of selling this ranch, which we were just tickled to death to have, we think the ranch is spectacular. It was priced right. But, but from an information standpoint, um, I really had no clear leader to say, Hey, Joey, here's the packet of information the on the ranch. And so, uh, we were tasked with figured out. And so, I mean, which is okay with us because that's our business. And so, you know, so the process of our thinking is if I'm a buyer and I come to look at this ranch, what do I need to make sure I feel comfortable purchasing it? And furthermore, you know, my whole world's talking to lawyers, you know, and saying, hey, Joey, you got to present me with some stuff that makes some sense. And I need a package that's going to make sense. And so if I can't get a package that's going to approve by an attorney or I can't make it make sense to the to the buyer, um, it becomes too heavy, too difficult. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have a, a, a sister company we started um, a number of years ago called Land Information Systems, which is a geo database um, company that basically allows us to layer information. Um, it allows us to um, look at different um, assets of a property and then display them on a map. So um, some of that stuff we can get from the public uh, a lot of it we have to get privately, so we have a geo a geo database collector mm. that you know it's 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 differentially corrected. I can get real heady about it, but it, what it means is that it will collect data down to ten centimeters of, of accuracy. And so uh, my son, who's a geo database analyst, uh, Braden Burns, spent five days on the ranch uh, just collecting assets, uh, just so we have a document now that we can display where every sprinkler is, where every water line is, um, where the pivots are, and be able to give something that's a working document to a new buyer mm. to understand what they're going to um, receive when they buy the ranch. Because what we found was there wasn't only a irrigation system, but tied to that irrigation system is they used to uh, winter 1,500 cows or steers. Or, I'm sorry, they would summer 1,500 steers on this property, um, yearlings. And... Um, and uh, they, they set up a very unique, um, ornate uh, watering system out of the same reservoir to, to water the cattle. Mm. So that's in place now. We have that located on the maps as well. So it's, uh, it's, our package of information is very good. Yeah. Very yeah. good. Yeah. So you're able to take that data, put it on an iPad, for example, hand it to somebody, and they can go find valves. They can go find anything they need on the ranch just walking around on the property and and be able to understand it and know how to run the system or to have a, a starting point to understand how to run the system well absolutely and not only that you know because it's a layered system um, we can add any assets that they may need so we can get public information that we're able to gather but furthermore if they need private information you know water valves anything that's 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 not of public information but they need to know where the water where the power line is how that fits and almost like a working manual yeah um we can provide that to them now. Um, they can look at it in the field on an iPad, and uh, we can actually set up their own database um, on a website that they can log into and, and have that information as well. So, I mean, it becomes a very, very useful tool for an individual. You know, you just can't, um, pretty hard to manage something you don't know what it is. Yeah. So, you know, gathering the data is the first step. Yeah. Yeah. So, you've mentioned family ranch, you've mentioned well, obviously, agriculture with grazing sounds like a pretty substantial uh, uh, ranch for cattle. Mm -hmm. um, and then you also mentioned hunting. So it sounds like it checks an access near resort town, checks a lot of boxes. Uh, this time of year, well, we're into first part of March. Um, the ranch is covered in snow. Yep. Um, what do you do about getting on the property this time of year to be able to get to the top, bottom? How do you, how do you get people on it? Well, you know... 
like I said, this is this is our only business, and so uh, everything we do is to is to position ourselves to sell ranches. So um, I actually have a showing had one a week ago. I have another one next week, and I have a um, a Tucker snowcat um, that we'll take up. Um, we'll uh, take our snowmobiles early. We'll make sure we know where exactly we're going to go. But I'll have uh, five in my machine um, next Thursday, and we'll be showing this ranch. And so um, we just have the the tools and the availability to um, to show ranches um, in the wintertime. And, and you know what we found is is some people always say, oh, I want to see the place with the snow off. Well, we have great photos, great information of that. When you get on a ranch in the winter and you're in the snow, you can really, it's, it's like seeing it in its everyday clothes. Um, mm. You can really see through the brush. There's no leaves on the trees. Um, you can really get a good visual of what's there. And, and uh, it's been amazing since we've invested into the resources that we needed to show ranches year round, um, how many ranches we've sold in the wintertime. Yeah. 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 They say, if you like them now, you're really going to like them in the summer oh, yeah. and fall. Sure. Sure. Yeah. And it's kind of nice to go up in a freezing day and sit in a t-shirt and my snow cap. <laughs> and <laughs> click know? around on the ranch. <laughs> click around on the ranch yeah. and go have lunch. So it's kind of fun. Yeah. Well, it's impressive that you can haul that big a machine to the property boundary in the winter. Oh yeah. No, we, we have a tilt trailer and drive her up on there and you know, it, she, she gets her done. So yeah. it's, it's just fun. Yeah. You know? And you know, that's the thing about this business. Um, we just love it. Mm. So, I mean, for all of us that, that are involved, it's, it's, you know, they say you never go to, if you love what you do, you never go to work a day in your life. life. So that's kind of how we live. So, yeah. yeah. Well, Joey, it, it's, it's a beautiful property, uh, 3,200, 3, acres, yeah. $15.9 million, over 800 irrigated acres and a pressure system, hunting, fishing, family ranch, close to amenities, you know, Aspen, great ski town. If you're looking for that, if you want to wine and dine, but there's also great amenities near the restaurant. I mean, near the, Ranch oh as yeah, well. you know it's funny. There's a little restaurant we were introduced to in Silt, which is just down the road. It's called Miner's Claim, mm -hmm. and uh, there are people that drive from Denver, from Grand Junction, and they make it a point to stop at Miner's Claim. It's in a little town of Silt, and you know, somebody said to be like a make a rabbit slap a hound dog. It's <laughs> pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> no, we yeah. we we make it a point. So next Wednesday night, I'll be at Miner's Claim. Well, yeah, yeah, That's I have awesome. to be. Yeah, That's uh, awesome. yeah, I was getting ready for the show. Well, it sounds like an amazing ranch. I mean, it's it's a it's a dream come true for people that can go shoot an elk and in the same morning go, you know, hit a tee, a golf ball off a tee at a golf course. Oh yeah, you, you know, know, it's how it is. You know, it's and that's funny. I, I've had so many guys that I've taken hunting um, early in the seasons. Um, and that's kind of the fun thing. We'll say, let's go kill an elk in the morning and, and in the afternoon, we will go grab our golf clubs and go play golf. And so it's, it's, that's, that's Western Colorado. Yeah. You know, when you got 300 days of sunshine a year, um, and, uh, you have good air service and, and just accommodations to take care of a family, you know, it's, it's, uh, their legacy kind of places, mm. you know, it's the places you just want to go. Yeah. And, uh, have a client of mine. I was just in La Jolla um, last week at his, you know, high rise, beautiful property overlooking the ocean. And um, all we talked about was can't wait to get back to the ranch. Yeah. You know, so mm. it's, uh, you know, we love it. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for pitching this property to us. Um, thanks for joining us on our episode. If you can find this property on eagleland.com, look for the Porter Ranch and hopefully it's still available. Sounds like you got some activity on it. So, uh, but feel free to check out anything else on the website. And uh, thank you for joining us. Roger. <laughs>